Okay, in the interests of keeping strictly to time, um, we'll carry on. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Vicky Wade. Vicky has close to 40 years' experience working in health in many roles, including nurse educator, clinical nurse consultant in cardiology, manager of a statewide Aboriginal vascular health program, area director of Aboriginal health, researcher and cultural leader of the Heart Foundation. Vicky is a strong advocate for her people and followed her matriarchal lineage as her grandmother was a healer and helped with the Noongar women in birthing our country. So in, the, in, the, uh, in the mission in which she lived, which is uh, southwest of Perth. Her mother was one of the first enrolled nurses in Perth and her daughter is carrying on the tradition as a doctor. Vicky is well known across Australia and is well respected for the work she's done in helping to close the gap. She sits on the National Close the Gap Steering Committee and is a board member of the Congress of Aboriginal Nurses and Midwives. Vicky hopes that the work she does will see her grandchildren have better opportunities that she, than what she and her family were afforded. Today, Vicky's going to be talking to us. Uh, the title of her presentation is Ambassadors as Key Stakeholders, Working Together, Working Better Together with Community, and we're going to continue the theme around uh, rheumatic heart disease. Thanks so much, Vicky. Kaya Maman Yoga. Gulunga, Nach, Viki, Tudich, Bibulum, Nunga, Jeripan, Mudja, Budja, Palawa, Bibulum. I pay my respect to the ancestors of this land and to all the Aboriginal people who live on land and country here, beautiful part of the world, Hobart. It's getting a little bit chilly though. <laughs> and uh, just for uh, Aboriginal people here today and everyone here today, I'd like to acknowledge all the uh, work that everyone's doing to uh, close the gap. Now, I don't really need to go over this because I think Bo <laughs> gave us a pretty good uh, uh, reminder this morning on just how devastating rheumatic heart disease is. But often people will say to me, well, why is it that way? You know, why has uh, this disease still existing in uh, a developed country? Why do we have the uh, largest rates in the world? And if you look globally and people say that Rheumatic heart disease is a disease of poverty, it's a disease of social uh, disadvantage, it's a disease of inequity. I think in Australia, if you look closer to home, in Australia it's a disease of over 240 years of uh, unconscious bias, of discrimination, of racism, of, of really systematic failings of Australia to its First Nations people. So a little bit about rheumatic heart disease. We do have a booth up the back, so please come and talk to us. We've had wonderful conversations already with a lot of people. But we began in about 2009, uh, part of the uh, Commonwealth uh, Rheumatic Fever Strategy for Australia. And at that time, we were the National Coordinating Unit. So we were a lot about collecting data from the state and territory programs, and also then uh, supporting the uh, state and territory uh, programs himself. But in, a, uh, in about 2014, as, as a lot of other Aboriginal programs, we moved to the Indigenous Australian Health Program. But much to my delight, in 2017, we changed our remit and we, uh, data was transferred to the AIHW. And we're now looking at community, we're looking at health training, for professionals, resources, and, and really supporting the community, which is really important. So our, our mission and our vision, our vision is that no child uh, dies in Australia as a result of acute rheumatic fever uh, or its complications. And we do know of the very grave cons uh, uh, you know, uh, complications that rheumatic heart disease does have. And I think we just got a glimpse of Pat Turner, who's the CEO of Nacho, talking on the video this morning, saying from this day forward, we should all be working that no child in Australia dies now from uh, rheumatic heart disease. Our mission, our new mission that we've developed as a new unit, is to uh, walk alongside Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and others at risk populations. There are others in Australia. There are Pacific Island, Māori, and refugees that do have uh, rheumatic fever, and also so we reduce uh, rheumatic disease in Australia. 
So one of the big things when I came into uh, Rheumatic Heart Disease Australia, I was formerly in the Heart Foundation as cultural lead, was that strong commitment to culture and embedding culture in everything we do, and which was fantastically backed up by Beck Slade, who's my boss, our manager, who's sitting over there with Dr Bo. Uh, so I've got to be good. <laughs> so uh, we're really committed to uh, having culture at the centre of what we do. And when we say we're walking alongside Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we really are walking alongside. Uh, and we've got a uh, cultural safety policy which we've developed and a, rec a beautiful reconciliation tree with STEM 10 steps to reconciliation where everybody comes and puts their fingerprint on and reads the uh, 10 steps of reconciliation. So it's us working together uh, uh, for reconciliation, which is really important. So culture is really important to us. And uh, just around uh, the cultural obligations, and I think with the culture being important and central, the other thing is to have Aboriginal leadership because that's a, another important uh, element to uh, Aboriginal programs. And this is based on my, my beliefs and how I was brought up as an Aboriginal person. And grandmothers and mothers, they, they had a shared responsibility to look after all children in the community. Elders helped children grow up into adults. And this was often in the sacred ceremony, uh, the helping children navigate the complexities of traditional social structures. And this is health and education within what our traditional structures were. Uh, in traditional Noongar, on Noongar from southwest of Perth, uh, life, the women connected and they educated and they supported families. And this was through teaching, through the spiritual and, and social connectedness. Because as, as we know, we are very connected to land. Um, and we come from the Black Swans, uh, Noongar people. And when we die, we'll go back to country. Uh, they don't do this with... And this is my nan, Nan Lily. Her quote was here that they'd done this with no formal education or training. They'd done this because it was their way of life. These roles have been passed down for generations. So when we were looking at the champions um, for change, our program, we wanted to make sure that we pulled on the strength of our champions, their Aboriginal strength, their connection, their cultural obligations of teaching others uh, and helping others. So that was very strong when we first got together to bring that out. And just to sort of reiterate it, it's, it's, this is sort of my matriarchal lineage and this is what I was uh, teaching the champions when they come in, that um, I, I became a nurse, but my mother was a nurse before me. So mum down the bottom in the middle, she was one of the first nurses in uh, West Australia. And then myself, I became a nurse and my daughter became a doctor. So there's always been this sense of healing, of helping uh, our people. And Nana Lily, bless Nana, she's in the middle there up the top. She took herself off to TAFE when she was about 75, we think, because she had no birth certificate, about, about 75 to learn how to sign her name. Uh, she had no formal education. She was not allowed, she was denied education but she birth, helped birth women and the birthing tree. She looked after the women after they gave birth, looked after the babies. She taught people, she taught the children, she taught our roles within the community. So I said that Nan Lily, she, she's an obstetrician, a gynaecologist, a midwife, a teacher with not one ounce of education. So she's our true PhD scholar. Uh, so the Champions for Change program, um, and this is, uh, came about after a uh, review I did on self-management for acute rheumatic fever, looking at that we needed people in the community to help take the messages, to help support, to help uh, community members navigate. And also we had a lot of people coming to us saying we want to do something. They've got rheumatic heart disease or the carers of people with rheumatic heart disease or the health workers, they're coming to us saying, we want to do something back in the community, we want to help. So that was the impetus for it. And uh, so we, we tap into their cultural knowledge, their knowledge of the communities, of ARF, if they've got the lived experience. So our champions are varied. There's about 25 of them. 
they're those with the lived experience, so with acute rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease. Those carers for and uh, the elders are really important. So I think the elders are important because some of the younger ones don't think that they've got that cultural authority. So they're to back them up with their cultural authority. And of course, to provide this leadership within the program. Uh, and so they use the cultural knowledge and the knowledge of that lived experience. And of course, they're acting on behalf and for the community. <coughs> so I'm a bit dry. Um, so we had two planning sessions. You'll hear the new buzzword co-design out now. And we thought, no, nah, we're not even going down the track of co-design because I've not yet found a really good model on what it looks like. But we wanted them to design the program. So we're calling it you design. So thank you. We've had two workshops now where we've brought the champions in to them to design the program. So the first thing we were calling it an ambassador program, they said, no, we want it to be a champion program because we are champions. So we changed the name from ambassador to uh, champion. So it's champions for change, sharing, caring and inspiring, caring for our people, for our families, for our community, sharing our lived experience and our knowledge and our cultural knowledge and inspiring others to have their injections or to go to the health clinics or to want to look after themselves. So we developed a list of attributes, some resources that's needed, and also what the champions wanted uh, to do as part of their role, some real good take home messages, and what Rheumatic Heart Disease Australia can do for them. So the two workshops were in Darwin. Some of the resources that they want uh, to develop, and this is new, we've done the planning stages, we're writing the program up, but a couple of the champions are really out there, active on social media. They're now starting to say, we are champions for change. So they're going to do the work uh, themselves. So uh, what resources we need, we need, they wanted a toolkit or something like a dilly bag with some information, some fact sheets, a USB with lots of information that they could take to places. And of course, the T-shirt with the logo so they can feel part of a family, of a group, and that they belong. Uh, school kits, there was a, a, a few of the champions that really wanted to go into the schools and to teach the school kids. So they wanted a school kit with things like colouring books, pages, water bottles, caps, toothbrush and toothpaste, which is important when you look at the dental hygiene needed, and also some stickers and other things like that, so some incentives for the school kids. Uh, they do want some bit of formal education and training, opportunities to have local Aboriginal staff training, so once again using the cultural knowledge of the uh, area, of the communities. They wanted a bit of communication uh, around emotional support and self-care, because they know once they're champions, people are going to come to them wanting information and they're going to have to look after themselves. Uh, activities, and there's a long list, and this is shortened down from big, big, big long list, so we need to find out what we can really, you know, what's achievable. But uh, just to allude you to some of the things here, which I thought was lovely, they wanted to create storyboards with local metaphors and local language so they can teach community, they wanted to develop the school program. And I think one of the beauties here is establish local action groups. So they wanted to look at who in the community can help and assist them. And I think that's fantastic because one of the uh, big things I was faced with or we were faced with is we didn't want the champions to go back and feel isolated. So they need to uh, have groups within the community to look after them. And I'm just going a bit quicker. Uh, what they want us to do is set up a Facebook page, which we are doing that at the moment. Half of them are on board, develop resources, provide training. Uh, they want us to advocate, to support and encourage them, to trust them, to believe in them, to promote them, have confidence, but let them do the work in the communities. Five minutes to go. Yeah. But I thought it was two minutes, two minutes ago. I can slow down a bit. <laughs> Uh, so when I looked at this, I sort of did it from the emotional side. So the attributes or the characteristics, those beautiful words that they wanted to describe themselves as champions. And the one that I really loved here is that you need to love people. 
and I thought that was really, really uh, lovely. They want to give praise, so if they go into the schools and the, t and the um, school children are knowing now about skin sores or if they're having more injections, increase their injections, they want to give praise to them. Um, they want to be approachable. They want to be motivated and, passion and, and be positive people, be positive role models. They, don't, they want to be non-judgmental. They're advocates. They want to have compassion, provide emotional support. And once again, if they're providing emotional support, they need actually to be able to self-care. And we had a traditional healer that came and talked to them and she's offered to uh, help out. So we will be um, you know, making sure that they're looked after. They want to empower people and empower through that lived experiences came out quite loud and clear and they want to be inspirational which they all are, they're all inspirational people. Uh, the other thing which I'm thinking is more of the sort of doing the cognitive thing is they want to be change agents. They want to make a difference in the community. Um, they want to be leaders and that's the uh, longer word for leader there. They want to be able to teach people. So if they're a little bit shy, we'll give them a little bit of work on to build their confidence up, connect them to somebody in the community who has confidence so that they can work together. One of the good things I'm thinking uh, that I thought at the time when we had the two workshops is they really, they're really concentrating on what is in the community from a strength based and we didn't even have to prompt them. They were saying we've got a great program under the CDEP where they go out and they help look after houses and clean the rubbish away and that. So we want to be able to make sure this is happening. They're volunteers for us, so as volunteers, if they're on the, uh, the CDP, they can actually get points for volunteering. So they brought this up, so that's really good. Not just that type of support, but the community support around mental health, around healthy lifestyles. So the Champions for Change were really looking at this holistic view of health. They saw that they have rheumatic heart disease or care for someone with rheumatic heart disease, but that was a part of a broader picture of what they wanted this to fit into their community. So I thought that was fantastic because some of them are young people. Uh, they want to be able to walk alongside the health professionals. Some of them did want to enter into that sort of peer support and health navigation role, and we will support them to do that. Our motto is we will support them for what they need to do to make a difference in the community. So it's not one size fits all. This program will be doing a lot of uh, different aspects of what Champions for Change are. Interpreters, because they are interpreters from their own language, They're, they take their lived experience and their cultural knowledge, use their metaphors from their own language, and they will translate this and help break down those medical barriers, that medical jargon, and particularly uh, helping that navigation through those complex, um, particularly I think one of the important roles here where one of, the, one of the champions wanted to be able to give support to some of the uh, people coming through the health service or at a community clinic and they know that they're not understanding so that patient interaction with the health professional, they want to help with that. Um, the community engagement was really important and of course the sharing the stories, the lived experience and I've talked about the change agent. Uh, the groups that they wanted to sort of uh, have a look at uh, to do some work with, with the mums and bubs groups and one of our champions has already um, done a lot of work for us. She's made two films, directed two films, sharing the heartbeat and we have the links to that on, on, at our booth. And also, so she was very interested in uh, young women becoming uh, pregnant and schools, youth groups, and I, a, a lot of the champions were very interested in doing some work around from a child to an adult because what they were saying is when you're diagnosed with acute rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease, your parents want to wrap you up in cotton wool. So you become a child a lot longer. 
So that transitioning from an adult to a child is an area where some of the champions want to work. And we think that's an important area too. So we're, we're quite happy that the champions identified that themselves. Uh, elders, uh, men's and women's groups. And that's it. So the Champions for Change, inspiring, inspiring their communities, their families, uh, caring, caring for people and sharing their knowledge, their cultural knowledge and their lived experience. And it's going to be exciting times, so watch this space. <laughs> yeah.